Good Saturday evening, everybody. Hang on just one second here. I've got one more thing to do and go ahead and get this mass in motion going so you can see what's going on out there. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for this evening. We're going to continue to see some soggy conditions across much of the Mid-South area as we get into the course of the evening hours. And if you do have any plans for travel, we are going to be seeing again some more problems into and around the Mid-South area as we get into later on this evening, especially on the roadways where it comes to rainfall. But there's also the possibility we're going to be seeing again the, the potential for some more areas of precipitation frozen in nature as we get into around eastern parts of Arkansas and especially southern Missouri. So if you have any plans for travel there, again, this is where we're going to be seeing the possibility for a lot more problems north and west of the Mid-South area into around later on tonight. And that is going to be, again, the main thing that we're going to be looking for uh, for this evening. So if you do have any plans for travel tonight, stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about that coming up here in just a little bit. We'll also take a look at the forecast into the rest of the weekend, which does include, again, some fairly soggy conditions out there and the possibility of some much colder weather. I hope you like variety because if you don't, this is not going to be the forecast that you want to be sticking around for because we've got, again, the potential for some much milder conditions coming our way as we get into and around the area of uh, the rest of the evening out across much of the Mid-South. So please keep that in mind. Again, be flexible where the schedule is concerned and also where the uh, forecast is going on as well. Amy Cat 79 welcome to the show on Periscope and Twitter for this evening. Thanks for joining us uh, from around West Memphis, Arkansas. Appreciate that, and thanks for dropping on by. If it, again, if you're just uh, joining us for this evening, drop your location and your weather reports if you got them into the comments section. We'd love to see where you're broadcasting, netcasting, or watching this from. We'd love to have you along for that, so definitely want to stay tuned for, again, the evening hours. Again, for the rest of the evening, more chances of rain across much of the area for tonight, so more possibilities of, again, more detailed forecast on what we're going to be seeing into the rest of the evening. Give me just two shakes here to get more details into around what's going on with the forecast, again, for tonight. All right, that should do it. Welcoming aboard all of our Facebook viewers as well for this evening, and thanks for stopping on by. This is what you're going to have to deal with tonight. I-55 around Goodman Road, just north of Goodman Road, which you can see there through the fog and the drizzle. Not too many people out tonight, decent amount, but not as many as we usually could see at this time of the evening because of the rain and the cold temperatures. Not exactly the most hospitable evening to be out out there. GPC3, welcome to the show on Periscope for tonight. And Christopher Harvey, cold in Huntington, Tennessee on Facebook. Thanks for joining us uh, for this evening. Dave Hutchinson, welcome to the show as well on Facebook for this evening. A little bit thicker fog. This is what it looks like from Germantown, Tennessee. The water tower, Poplar Pike in Germantown right behind the weather information here. So again, we usually can see the Poplar and Mendenhall Towers not quite the case at this time because of that fog and drizzle across much of the Mid-South area for tonight. This is what it looks like downtown. Again, fog across much of the area. Hard to see Big River Crossing. Mississippi River out there to the left or the right lower side flowing away to the upper left-hand corner of your screen as it goes underneath the bridge trio. So we do have, again, a little bit more fog. Very picturesque, no question about that. Just not quite the evening to be driving around. Now, believe it or not, this view is much improved from what we saw over just the course of the last couple of hours ago uh, into and around the area for right now. Carolyn James, welcome to the show from Corinth, Mississippi, 44 in Piperton. Paula Walls, thank you very much uh, for joining us for this evening. Barbara McWilliams. Need to know about next Friday the 16th. We'll take a look at that on the seven-day forecast in just a little bit. Katie Yarbrough-Bell from South Haven. Thanks for joining us uh, on the show for tonight. And we'll talk about all, again, those locations for your forecast for the Mid-South coming up here in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on with fog right now. Hopefully not quite as bad as we get into tomorrow morning. But as of right now, northeast Mississippi down toward Oxford, Tupelo, and even up to around the Tennessee River Valley in parts of southwest Tennessee. We do have, again, some pretty dense fog out across much of the area. So this could be a problem for travelers late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Allowing a little bit of extra time to get to where you're going would not be such a bad idea. Let's see, Lina McMillan Farley, welcome to the show. Craig Barrick, Barrick from Olive Branch. Hope I'm saying those names correctly. Thank you very much for joining us tonight and everybody on Periscope and Twitter as well. Thank you very much for dropping on by. Here's what it looks like on Storm Tracker 3S radar. Not a lot going on 
and going to continue to see light amounts of these showers drifting on through over the course of the next couple of hours. Sand, say it, Sant, Santone Hunt, welcome to the show on uh, Periscope. Thanks for joining us tonight. Light scattered showers, still enough to wet the roadways down, so this could be a bit of a problem out there for drivers tonight. The good news that everything you are seeing here is just plain rainfall. A few thousand feet up, it's more than likely snow, but it's melting as it gets close to the surface. But colder air is making its way on through the area for tonight, and that is again going to be a bit of a problem into tomorrow. Not so much for us. Again, we've got liquid rainfall here on Storm Tracker 3S radar, but we do have a problem with again more moisture encountering the colder air back to the north of us. Let's see, it looks like my touch screen is also having problems tonight. Apologies for that. Here's what we're looking for again across portions of southern Missouri. Notice the change in colors here. Rain, sleet, snow mixture from St. Louis down through about areas of southwest Missouri at this time. And this is just the tip of the problem where it comes to anything involving moisture. Getting into tomorrow morning, a lot more stuff like this may be possible in northern Arkansas and southeastern Missouri, which means the National Weather Service, very good idea for issuing a winter weather advisory for the north eastern corners of Arkansas and a good swath of southern Missouri from I-55 all the way back over to almost Springfield for tonight. So if you are going to be traveling, this is what you're going to have to deal with early in the morning. Now, this is not in effect directly for the News Channel 3 viewing area. So why the heck are we telling you about this? Because we are the station that is on your side. We want to make certain you are aware that this is happening. And if you are traveling or know somebody who is going to be traveling through all this, this is where you're going to have to deal with the problem. And it's a pretty widespread problem at this time. Numerous states, about 15 different states under these winter weather advisories. Northeast Arkansas, again, just the southern edge of this, but from New York State and New England all the way back to Colorado and around New Mexico. Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arkansas, all seeing different types of winter weather tonight and into very early tomorrow morning. So if you're heading from here or know somebody who's heading up this direction down into the Mid-South, you may see some slick roadways into tomorrow morning, especially in these areas. There is nothing in effect at this time for the News Channel 3 viewing area. If that changes, we will let you know about that. So keep it tuned. We'll keep you updated on that. How much rain have we gotten today? Rather a lot, a decent amount since midnight when the uh, numbers roll back over to zero again. Tunica at the airport in Tunica, Mississippi, 3.8 inches of rainfall, a very decent amount out there. We may, according to memphisweather.net, might have set a daily record. At least we're coming close to it for the Memphis area. Either way, a lot of places got close to two inches, inch and a half to two inches. Pretty common across much of the area for the rest of the day today. So we'll continue again to see uh, that possibility for some more light drizzle out there into tonight. Let's run the numbers and show you what we've got going on again. And through the evening, everybody should be staying above freezing. It'll be chilly. It'll definitely be a cold rainfall, no question about that, but mainly just rainfall out there. Now, into tomorrow morning, this is where we see, again, that possibility of frozen precipitation north of the News Channel 3 viewing area. Dyersburg, Jonesboro, Blytheville, the Boot Hill, Southeast Missouri, Poplar Bluff, Cape Girardeau, maybe even around Paducah. You could be looking at a lot of problems from this if the temperatures are correct, and it looks like it's going to be just below freezing, just north of the Mid-South area. Robbie M.C. Cool, welcome to the show on uh, Periscope. Thanks for joining us for tonight. Crystal Cackler, good evening to you as well on Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, into the rest of tomorrow... Whatever we have from that early morning possibility of frozen stuff, that goes away. Drier conditions, sort of. We'll be looking at less rainfall and more drizzle close down to the surface, and that'll be sticking around for a bit. But watch what goes on as we get into around tomorrow evening. Another small burst of moisture down toward the surface is where the air is going to be just cold enough to support that mixture of different precipitations out there. That cold air down here, the warm, moist air with that moisture rides up over the top of this, and that is where we get, again, that potential for another round of precipitation tomorrow evening into around Sunday night. We could see, again, the possibility of more of that precipitation. That could stick around through News Channel 3 at 10 on Sunday evening, but mainly, again, Jackson, Humboldt, Ripley, 
roughly north of Covington, Dyersburg, and into around Mississippi and Craighead counties in Arkansas and the Boot Heel. That's where we'll be seeing that potential problem. And that may stick around into around the time we hit daybreak on Monday morning, but by that time it should be leaving us along with most of the rainfall. I'm not going to be getting rid of all of it, but it will be sticking around in a very light fashion for Monday as well. So tomorrow, much colder than today back in the lower 40s for high temperatures. And again, that's going to be as best as we get out there. Parts of the Mid-South north of I-40 could just only make the upper 30s tomorrow. Maybe a little bit more mild south of I-40 in Memphis with temperatures only back into the mid to upper 30s at times. So that could be something to take a look at. And showers out there, this is where we see that potential of lingering frozen precipitation early Monday morning, mainly north of Memphis and in and around portions of northwest Tennessee. That's going to be the main thing that we see the problem with, and then that should be gone as we go into the rest of the day. Now, Tuesday should be relatively rain-free, should be a nice mild day, temperatures very close to normal for this time of the year, but again, we'll be seeing the rain come back again as we get into Tuesday evening. After that, as we go into the next couple of days afterwards, soggy but very mild coming up for Valentine's Day, so if you're heading out with your significant other, it looks like it is going to be, again, rather on the mild side, but there could be those showers out there, so it could be a soggy Valentine's Day. Temperatures pushing, again, hope you like variety out there because temperatures will be close to 70 degrees on Thursday, back in the 50s again, close to normal for Friday and Saturday, and then upper 50s to lower 60s, but still plenty of rainfall. About the only day around here we see that's going to be totally rain-free looks to be probably Tuesday, and that, again, right after sunset is where the rain starts to come back again. So temperatures, talk about variety. Yeah, we've got that with no problem whatsoever across much of the Mid-South for this evening. Millington, Tennessee, starting things off. Thanks to my wife for this inspiration right here. Again, forgot about Naval Support Activity, but featuring them as part of our Weather Where the Troops Are segment. And if you've got somebody serving and friends, loved ones in the military, we try to keep you a little bit closer to what's going on out there by giving you an idea as to what's going on with weather around the globe. So we usually start off here in the Mid-South, 39 degrees, drizzle, and a lot of clouds with winds out of the north at 6 at Naval Activity Support there. Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. High temperature today of 88, low of 73, currently 77 degrees. So we're again seeing the possibility of some, probably some more showers and thunderstorms for this area. Leeds Pete, welcome to the show on Periscope and Twitter for this evening. Thanks for joining us as well, and everybody else checking in on Facebook for tonight. Iraq temperatures back in the 40s and 50s, cloudy skies across the country, with the exception of Baghdad currently sitting at about 52 degrees there. Afghanistan, teens around Faizabad in the eastern part of the country with mostly cloudy skies, snow around the airport in Kabul, 38 degrees and cloudy in Kandahar and 34 degrees just above freezing in and around Herat. Back into the Persian Gulf, temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s and mostly clear skies around the Persian Gulf area close to the Strait of Hormuz and into around South Korea. Temperatures back in the 20s and 30s with pretty favorable weather there for the Winter Olympics that are going on. So no major snowstorms, but definitely on the cool side as colder air continues to spill its way down from around portions of Siberia, right across Mongolia in that area. If you'd like to get more information about this, about what's going on with weather where the troops are or around the world, great place to go to is here. It's the World Meteorological Organization, and you can get that by going to public.wmo.int. Great way to keep in touch with what's going on with weather and climate around the globe. So if you'd like to know more about that, great website to go to, and there's other websites, other meteorological stations around the world that you can check out all for free. Your way to stay in touch a little bit more because, again, very important to keep those on the home front in contact with those overseas who can't make it home every once in a while because they have their duty to do in the military, so something to keep an eye on there. Now, if you'd like to know more about getting ready for severe weather, we are in the prime severe weather season for the Mid-South right now. Between January and about early May, this is the time of the year where we can get the most mild monstrous thunderstorms, the more powerful bursts of wind, the heavier hail amounts, all
all that can happen now, and it's important to be ready for it. The first four meetings that are coming up from the National Weather Service to teach you how to be a volunteer Skywarn storm spotter are going to be scheduled. They start this week. First one will be in Sumner, Mississippi this Tuesday. Next week, Tuesday, will be held at Wynn, Arkansas at the Fire Department. One week after that, Thursday, February 2nd, Lexington, Tennessee, and Thursday, March 1st in Trenton, Tennessee. These meetings last about an hour or so. They are totally free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars, one of the best ways our tax dollars have ever been spent, in my not-so-humble opinion. And again, if you'd like to know more, contact the National Weather Service, or if you're on Facebook or Periscope or anything else, check out again our website, wreg.com slash weather. It's down below the forecast details, including links of the National Weather Service. Where's the meeting for Memphis and Shelby County? It's not on this list yet, but it will be, so keep it tuned. We'll keep you updated on when that will be coming up. Keep up to date with my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Keep you updated there. And also more information, again, will be on with Bob and Josh coming up bright and early Monday morning. Great sports guests talking a lot about sports in and around the Mid-South area and keeping you informed. Again, that's AM 730. Or check out their website at Talkback Live Network. Dot org. Great opportunity to learn more about what's going on with sports in and around the Mid-South and, of course, the forecast with yours truly, of which I will have an update coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. Mike Sadie is upstairs getting a, another busy day in sports ready to go for you to let you know what's happening out there. And, of course, we'll have more throughout the rest of the weekend. Tune in tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak, and we'll have a lot more with what's going on. If there's any ice on the roadways, fog slowing things down, accidents out out there. Your weekend update starts at 6 a.m. Sunday Central Time, so again, keep an eye on that, and we'll keep you updated with what's going on in and around the Mid-South area so you can be prepared before you head out the door early on Sunday morning. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick. Thanks to everybody for joining us for on Periscope and Twitter and also on our Facebook page. More information throughout the rest of the weekend at WREG.com slash weather, and of course, more tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, and bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks for joining us and keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest.